Oh, hi guys. Hello. Me and King, we have been dating for one year and what a magical, magical year it's been. I want to reflect on this one year with my love. I want to tell you guys about how it started. It's a part of a one year gift. I put together this album that I might be flipping through today. I dedicated this album to my love, King, from Pola. I want to tell you guys about how it all started. We saw each other for the first time in 2021 and our mutual friend introduced us at this dinner in New York City. We barely got to talk back then and I was in a different relationship and I actually didn't learn that much about King that day. And then we didn't see each other for a little over a year. The next time we saw each other, we were at the same friend's birthday party. And that night in December, 2022, King sat next to me at the birthday dinner and we were talking all night long. The next day was my last day in New York City before I was out for winter holidays. And King texted me and we decided to go on a date the same day. And then after that, uh, we actually didn't see each other for a month because I was out of town. And before I proceed to tell you about what happened after the break, I also want to tell you about my emotional state when I met King. Okay, guys, I went through multiple serious relationships in my life prior to meeting King. But then I think I learned a lot from these relationships. And I also felt so exhilarated and so free and so happy at that point when I met King. I didn't expect to meet him whatsoever. And I think that's exactly the state when you are open to meeting someone. It is very paradoxical because it's like, it's the saying, when you least expect it, it happens. And I think it's very true because it happens when you allow it to happen and when you're open to it. Meaning you're not pressuring the universe to deliver something to you. Meaning you're not desperate for a certain outcome. It just means that you're happy being yourself and you're happy with whatever is going on in your life. And you know that you will be happy either way. King came into my life to expand on that happiness, to amplify that happiness. But he didn't come into my life to bring that happiness. You know what I'm saying? And then I left for the holidays and I was gone for a month. And during that month, we texted so much. We like never stopped texting. And it started out with like a small chain of like little messages trying to get to know each other. But it grew very rapidly. It grew at an exponential rate, like the questions we were asking each other and the answers we were giving, they were so detailed and they went into such depth that our conversation grew into this enormous chain of messages. And reflecting on it now, I think it was very important for us to have that month because we didn't see each other and we couldn't be physical with each other. And it allowed for us to just to get to know each other and ask certain questions that maybe we wouldn't get to if we were always together, you know, going on dates and seeing each other in person. So then I finally got back to New York and King was just so attentive, so attentive. Guys, I landed at 11 p.m. And then the next morning I woke up at like 6 a.m. from jet lag and there were flowers waiting for me downstairs with the concierge. And I just remember waking up and realizing that I have a flower delivery downstairs. And I just almost sprinted downstairs. I was so excited. I was so happy. Then we finally had our second date. And honestly, from that point onwards, we were like almost inseparable. 
because we loved spending time with each other we loved seeing each other we loved talking to each other and it's been the smoothest relationship in my life the easiest relationship of my life I never knew that the relationship can be so easy. I have this theory that two people, when they're together, they pretty much need to have some sort of overlap. Like imagine if each person has their own world and it's like a circle and another person has their own world and it's a circle as well. There needs to be a very big overlap of these circles. If there is no overlap, it's very difficult to build a relationship and it's very easy to start fighting if you don't have that overlap. And another thing is like, if two circles don't overlap, then one person needs to almost like betray themselves in order to accommodate another person, in order to please another person, in order to avoid fighting with another person. And I also think that relationships are there so you can be the full expression of yourself but you don't need to alter yourself you don't need to change your passions you don't need to change your goals of course you can grow and expand but you shouldn't be betraying yourself you should be your authentic self and i'm saying all of this because with king i feel like i can be my authentic self like 100 percent king is the most supportive man i've ever met He's so, so, so supportive. And it's just, I think that makes our relationship so easygoing and so loving. So yes, guys, in February, 2023, that was the month of us getting to know each other in person. February was the first month that we were seeing each other pretty much on a daily basis. That was the month when King told me that he told his parents about me and then I started meeting his friends and he started meeting my friends. We had a lot of like friend gatherings. It was just a very exciting time to start to get to know someone. And you also have like the beginning of the honeymoon phase. And by the way, guys, it's been over a year at this point, but I still am in a honeymoon phase with him, like 100%. I don't think it ends maybe it transforms i think when it's your person the feeling just gets deeper but it doesn't have to like evaporate or vanish it doesn't have to do that and then in march i was gone for some time i traveled to europe and then we were apart for like two weeks and i think during that time king and i realized how much we appreciate each other and how much we enjoy being by each other's side and um yeah, it was just kind of difficult being apart, even though it was just for two weeks. And then I got back to New York and that's when things just kind of like accelerated because King told me that uh, he wanted me to be his girlfriend. So we made our relationship official. I told my parents about King and then we also realized that we loved each other. So we said, I love you to each other. And then I also got to meet King's parents and uh, King's brother and his wife. And we traveled to Philadelphia for a day to do exactly that. And it was our first trip, even though it was just like a day trip on the train, but it was still nice to go. And then in April, we had our first, like a more serious trip. I decided to bring King to LA and show him my view of LA, my perception of LA. I love LA. So yeah, I decided to bring King to LA and show him my version of LA. And I think he really enjoyed it. And then, yeah, then we got back. With King, another thing that I just admire so much about him is that he is so extroverted and he truly, genuinely loves people. Whenever we are in ubers he like talks to uber drivers and gets to know them and then he just genuinely enjoys meeting new people and whenever he meets someone new he starts to like care about them and then he has such a large group of friends in new york city and i feel like i'm also very extroverted and i also have a lot of different friends so what was happening throughout that spring and it's actually happening up until this day we were bringing our friend groups together. And I think some of our friends are actually friends among themselves now 
like independently of me and King. So it's very cool to see how our two worlds are merging. And I think that's just another core trait that me and King have in common, our extroversion. Then in May, I graduated from Columbia from a master's program. My family came into town and when they came, they met King. And I think it was a huge success. Like my dad and King have their birthdays on the same day. So I think in some way, it already binds them together and makes them like predisposed to like each other. They talked so much throughout that weekend. I feel like they connected on so many little like nerdy topics. Uh, and it was such a joy to see how my parents liked King so much from the start and felt comfortable with King. And there was just so much harmony in all of our interactions. So that was May. And then we spent a wonderful summer together. The only thing was that we were apart for five weeks. But before that happened, we traveled to Charleston in May, which was like one of our coziest trips. We also got an upgrade at our hotel. And we had this massive apartment with like a kitchen like a suite style, right? With a kitchen, living room, two bedrooms, two closets, two bathrooms, everything was just top notch. And we were like joking, oh, this is our South Carolina apartment now. Being there for the weekend, it was such a happy moment. And then we also went to the Hamptons in June. And then in July, we had our Europe trip. Uh, we went to Portugal to visit my dear, dear friend Barbara, whom I miss so much. And then after Portugal, we went to Spain to stay with my family for a little bit. And then we went to France, we drove from Spain to France, and then we had four days to just ourselves. We went to Carcassonne, then we went to Bordeaux. It was just harmonious. Like I keep using this word harmonious, but I just think it's very applicable. I'm just very thankful that to this day, we don't have any core, things that we fight about. I think you feel when the person is your person. And then uh, we spent five weeks apart and then I got back to New York in August and um, we were reunited. But in August, I also like my mood was a little bit off because I was trying to understand what I wanted to do with my life, like following my graduation from Columbia. I was reassessing, I was thinking about what kind of role I want to occupy in architecture. And King was very supportive during that time. We also did a wonderful trip uh, for Labor Day. We went to LA for a few days, saw his brother uh, with his wife and a child. Uh, we also went to Tulum. Tulum was also really fun because we went with King's best friends. And it again felt like our worlds were just merging. And at that point we were even like traveling together with King's friends. We stayed in a beautiful villa and we just had a lot of fun on that trip. We danced a lot, we went to the beach, we tanned. We just did a lot of fun things uh, on that trip. We went to Chichen Itza, so it was really cool. In August, King left his old job and then he had six months off. So he started planning his big around the world trip. In September, King also invited me to come to Florida to visit his house, the house he grew up in. And um, before then, we also went to our first wedding together in South Carolina. And then we drove from South Carolina through Georgia to Florida. And we stayed there for a week. I had to like fly um, back to New York during the week for work. But then I got back down for the second weekend. It was very cozy in the house. And I was seeing all the childhood pictures of King and I was getting to know his family more. I feel a lot of love, so much love and so much gratitude for this person and for him bringing me into his life and just being so kind and loving to me every single day. In October, my best friend Fadi came to visit and that was actually the last weekend that King was here. And King and Fadi had met before in April and August, but this was the weekend that we just were inseparable, the three of us. And then we of course saw other friends as well and we went to parties and all of that was just very special. And I could see how King and Fadi were bonding and I think this is just another telltale sign that um, my friends love King and my friends see 
how harmonious we are and how right we are for each other and how similar we are. In October 2023, we actually said bye to each other for like four months. And that was very difficult because our routine is like we see each other every single day and imagining not like imagining king not being in new york for four months was slightly terrifying for me it was terrifying i was like oh my god i see this man every single day he's such a core part of my routine what am i gonna do without him in my life but i also think it's important to maintain at least some level of independence and maintain your life maintain your friendships maintain your interests so that's what I focused on when he was apart. I got to join him here and there. For example, I went to India with him in November and it was just magical. It was out of this world. It was just really out of this world. We were staying in beautiful hotels and we were just doing what we wanted and we were exploring and we were together in this country so far away, so far away from New York City and it was just magical it was out of this world i would give so much to just go back to that experience with king but i also know that we have a lot of travels coming up in the future i have full faith in it so i know that we will have so many moments like india and then after india king also got to come to my birthday i decided to celebrate my birthday in georgia and I did it so my family from Moscow could come to Georgia because it's very close. And then King could also come to Tbilisi. So we were celebrated in Tbilisi. I remember I just woke up on the day of my birthday and King had two bouquets of flowers and he got me a beautiful ring from India. And then we were apart for another month and then we reunited in France where King came skiing with my family. So that was really, really incredible um, because, again, all the pieces of the puzzle were just fitting together. And even though King was there with like 18 people from Russia and everyone spoke Russian, he, for some reason, fit right in. <laughs> this is my reflection on our first year of dating. I'm incredibly grateful. I want to remind all of you that when a relationship feels easy and when there is so much love, then you know this is your person and you should really, really cherish that. I'll see you in my next video. Bye, guys. Also, guys, I forgot to mention that at that very, very first dinner that we met um, in October 2021, King's best friend, Joanna, said that, uh, oh, King, look at this girl. This, this is the girl you should date. She said something like that. And then guess what? She actually predicted it. And um, now we've been together for over a year.